Hey guys, welcome back to OMS TV. Today we're gonna have a look at the Sony Cinema Line FX6. Yes, this lovely, lovely beast right here. Now, if you watched our previous video on the Sony FX3, you'll have a very good idea of where this camera fits into Sony's lineup. And in that video, we also mentioned shooting with the FX6 and compare it a little bit to the FX3. And that's gonna be quite important later on when you, we run you through what we like about this camera and also what we don't like. Now, we've got Jean here. He is of course our Orms broadcast sales manager and he went out shooting with this unit at the Anthony Shapiro Pottery Studio. Now this was actually done before the FX3 launch and we were going to review this camera before the FX3 review but things got a little bit away from us and as a result here we are. So we're going to run you guys through this unit, through the specs, what we like about it, what we don't like about it and give you our opinion on how this unit features compared to its competition and also where it fits into Sony's lineup. So join us for that. So I'm gonna hand it over to Jean here. And Jean, please run us through what the headline specs on this unit is. Okay, so obviously most importantly, it's a full frame cinematic camera, shooting 4K at 120 frames a second. Uh, we have 10-bit 422 internal recording and via the SDI output, 16-bit raw recording. Uh, 15 stops of dynamic range. And we have got S-Log3, S-Log2 and Sony's new S Cinetone, okay. which is obviously there for uh, cinematographers that have less time in the post-production suite. Mm -hmm. And also to add on top of that, she also boasts with dual native ISO, 800 and 12,800. Okay, now that's obviously quite a difference from the FX3, which didn't have a dual native ISO setup. So just explain to us quickly what is dual native ISO and what's the benefit? So dual native ISO is that it's got two sweet spots. You're looking at 800 ISO and 12,800 ISO, mm -hmm. where there's almost virtually no noise. Okay, obviously makes it nice and dynamic for different filming situations. Spot on. Okay, so since we've covered all the specs on this unit, I just want to run through what the unit is actually like to shoot with. And if you can run us through sort of the key takeaways on the ergonomics of this specific camera, because again, it is very, very different from the previous Cine camera that we looked at, the FX3. Yeah, so definitely uh, FX6 cinematic camera, removable lens, nice full frame sensor, uh, top handle with audio control, totally removable with two thumb locks over here. And then you've got a side grip over here, nice and beefy, mm -hmm. shaped to your hand. Uh, with a quick release over here to rotate, full articulation. Yeah, I really like that. The reason that I find this very ergonomic is that you can remove all the accessories off of this. Then you're basically sitting with a box camera, which beautifully then mounts onto, say, a Ronin S2. Okay. For, you know, movement with cinematic shots. Mm. Um, also, the button layout on this, I, I absolutely loved. The side grip for me was probably the, the most important uh, part while shooting. Um, the grip actually rotates, like I said, so you can get a nice high shot. You can get a nice low shot from the top, purely just by locking it off with the grip over here. Record button in the side grip, okay. top grip, and on the side of the camera. So okay. three points where you can actually hit record. There's a zoom rocker on the side grip and on the top grip. Now, the LCD for me was a little bit small. Mm -hmm. um, I had some, some issues with, with checking focus, but it's very much well articulated. Um, you can rotate to 360 degrees. It comes nice with this little arm. And there's a total of six points where you can remount that unit in different kind of ergonomic shooting conditions. Okay. She also boasts with six quarter width with thread mounts on the actual body, okay? And three on the handle at the top and one at the back. So there's a plethora of, of mounting points for different monitors, uh, a secondary record if you want to record the 16-bit RAW, um, as well as a shoe on top of the camera, of course. Of course, okay. And I mean, I see we've got all the all the standard ports at the back. You want to run us through those as well? Yeah, the standard ports, of course, is your HDSDI, your time code out, your HDMI, and then your power button and remote uh, connection. Okay. And on this unit, you've got XLRs over here. Yeah. Okay. So Professional XLRs is always yeah. a must-have in, in a cinematic camera. And then battery on this unit? So the battery on this unit is the Sony BPU35. It's a, a new model from, from Sony. We, we used to do the 30 and the 60 and the 90. Okay. Um, it's still a 12 volt battery and um, obviously universal through the other cinematic cameras. Okay, cool. Um, and then on this unit, recording media, what have we got? 
So recording media, you're going to be using two memory cards. One is the CF Express Type A. Okay. Make sure that you know the difference between Type A and Type B. And then SD cards. Okay, and this does the same slick thing that we've now seen in the FX3 and the A7S3, where your slot actually accommodates both cards at the same Spot time. On. Yeah, saving lots of space in the back um, with a one slot, two card yeah. kind of scenario. Yeah, I mean, as I've said before, I absolutely love that. I wish more manufacturers would do something like that. I think it's very, very cool. Now, you've obviously spent almost an entire day shooting with this unit inside a pottery studio. I have not shot with it at all, so completely at your mercy here. How did you actually find shooting with this camera? I got mixed feelings. Okay. Let's do the pros and the cons. Pros, I absolutely love the top handle. A lot of space for the fingers. Mm -hmm. um, we have got a zoom rocker over here and a record button. So I thoroughly enjoy the top handle. Side handle as well. Nice and comfortable, strong grip. Um, with articulating, rotating uh, grip, it was mm -hmm. it was great shooting with it. Um, where I lacked a, a bit I was the autofocus. Okay. I had a hard time shooting S Log Three um, in a very monotone clay studio, um, and judging focus for me was was a little bit difficult with such a small screen. But uh, I had to uh, depend on the autofocus, mm -hmm. and it wasn't there. Okay, and that's obviously quite a different a difference from what we experienced with the FX3 just yeah. a couple of days ago. Because yeah, that thing, the autofocus was locked on like it's nobody's business. Autofocus and, and yeah, the eye recognition of that was just incredible. Something else also, stabilization. Uh, FX3, mm -hmm. amazing stabilization. Yeah, lacking. Um, it's a very light cinematic camera. Okay. So you really got to pull the camera into your body to try and get that shot as stable as possible. Um, I suffered a little bit with the high shots with stability. We've actually spoken to Sony's broadcast division about the stabilization and they said that they can't put stabilization in this unit specifically because of the way that the NDs work in this. Yeah, so this camera boasts with a nice new feature. It's actually got a variable ND scroll wheel. So you can pre-select your NDs with, the, with your buttons over here mm -hmm. and then over here you've got a variable ND selector, that sweet spot. Okay, and that is completely new. I mean, like, I've personally never seen that before. Yeah, and a variable NDs for me is a new thing on a cinematic camera. Okay, and then going from that, I just want to touch on the actual quality that this unit outputs. Now, I mean, I know it's a full frame sensor, it's Sony, it's got S Log 3, like, we know what the footage is going to be like, but just your experience about that? So, the S Log 3 is obviously very flat. Mm. Um, it's with a 15 stop in our dynamic range. It makes an editor's life a lot easier in post-production. Specifically, if the cameraman or the operator is not quite in that sweet spot for, for low light production, you know, the, the editor has the capability of pulling that back in post. Then just in terms of the actual recording quality, I mean, I know it's Sony, I know it's full frame. You know what you're gonna expect. And I mean, is that the case? Definitely. S-Log3, 10-bit 422 from Sony in a cinematic camera, you're gonna get what you're used to. This camera does deliver. Now, I know you've mentioned some of the things that you like and some of the things you don't like about this unit, but having not shot with it and just picking it up and playing with it a little bit, the one thing that actually stands out to me is the fact that this doesn't pass the ring tap test. It feels a little bit plastic almost. I know it makes the body very light, but oof, I struggle to have this feel like a quality product to me. Yeah, so Sony has obviously gone through the cinema line, the FX3, FX6, FX9, and, and Venice. They've gone with this, this, this silver matte finish on the camera. Mm. Um, your ring test, there's a reason for that. The camera is super light. Yeah. So, you know, the plastic they've used over here makes the camera feel a little bit plasticky, but the overall weight of the camera is very much manageable. Okay, um, is there anything else that stands out for you that you don't like about it? Um, I would have liked a bigger LCD screen. I've seen bigger LCDs on, on cinematic cameras. Yeah. It, it was a little bit small for me. The touch sensitivity was great. Um, the handling of the camera was great. Uh, the, the recording button location on the camera was amazing. I felt very comfortable shooting with it. Um, overall, I didn't really have much negative, to be honest. Okay. Then on that, I'll mention something that was actually a nice positive for me on the LCD screen. And that's the new menu that Sony's implemented here. Yeah, the menu on this camera is super simplistic. Very much similar to that of the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema cameras. Really yeah. easy to navigate with this top little uh, toggle over here. You know, up, down, navigating. It's in like in a, a block form. Easy to navigate, easy to manipulate. Well done, Sony. You really hit the ball out of the park this time. So actually, now that we've played with this camera and we've looked at it in depth, I've just realized there's something lacking on this camera. Have you noticed it? I have, actually. Um, at first, it didn't really phase me much, but the more I played with it, the more I tinkered with the camera, yeah, it kind of stands out. 
viewfinder. This camera doesn't have a viewfinder. Traditional cameraman wants a viewfinder for shooting in highlighted areas and putting a viewfinder to their eye so they can actually see what they're shooting. This doesn't have one. Yeah, and I mean, you've, you've mentioned multiple times already um, that this screen is just not quite up to par and it kind of feels like a viewfinder would have solved that problem. Yeah, something like a Zakuto Gratical would have been nice to mount on one of these pleather of quarter width widths, taking the HDMI feed out or an SDI feed out, going to a nice OLED viewfinder. If Sony had a viewfinder for this camera, it would be 100% spot on best camera for me. So within the cinema industry, what would be this camera's most direct competitor? It definitely has to be the Canon C200. However, this has a step up from the C200 and that's that 10-bit 422 recording internally. Unfortunately, the C200 does not have the 10-bit 422 recording. Yeah, but the C200 does have a viewfinder. Oh yes, the C200 does have a viewfinder. Mm -hmm. But I do like smooth 10-bit power. 10-bit is always a winner. Mm. So who would actually look at purchasing this camera? Like who's it aimed at? Definitely indie filmmakers, documentary filmmakers, and I'm hoping that this camera will be approved by Netflix for those production companies that just can't afford that top-end cameras. This camera does come in at a nice sweet spot in the price tag. Well guys, thank you very much for joining us for that very quick review on Sony CinemaLine FX6. And I also wanna thank Jean from our broadcast team for joining us and giving us a little bit of insight into how these cameras operate and who they're actually aimed at. Now, if there's anything that you guys would like to know, or if you are maybe interested in procuring one of these units, drop us a comment down below. We love hearing from you guys and we will respond to all of your comments. If you enjoy the type of content that we put out and you'd like to see more of it, please consider subscribing to our channel. It really helps us out a lot. And until next time, guys, cheers.